with the knowledge of his will, which is part and parcel of being filled with his spirit. So when Pentecostals are filled with the spirit, just to speak in tongues, which I believe is initial and is, and is very important for us, it's, 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 it's very important, but when we believe it's just that, and maybe for a little extra power, we miss the point. It's to be plunged deeply where our whole lives are dominated by God in, in, in connection with him as family and his entire plan. It's like, we are a family with you. You are a father. So if you are after this thing, we're after it. If Israel is still key to your last day's plans, then, then we're all about that. If the one new man is the larger picture, then we're all about that. Whatever your gospel is, whatever your charter is for the plan of the ages, we love you, Abba. We're in. We're in. We, we're in. You know where the word Abba comes from? It's an Aramaic word. Abba. You know where it comes from? Abba, Abba, Abba. Baby sounds. Because they can speak labially when they're young. They'll say Mama. They'll say Da Da too. They can do that. But anyway. I, 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 I believe that that is what is believed where the word came from. It's the natural sound of church. And you know what? That's covenant. And because you are sons, God has sent the Spirit of the Son into your hearts, crying out, Abba, Abba. Amen. Exactly. The Spirit of Sonship. We were going to look at that. It's in Romans 8 also, as well as Galatians 8, 4. 14, 16, Amen. Oh, there you have it. Okay, so he's all over this. <laughs> in one of the texts, it says the Spirit cries out, and the other text, it says we cry out. Yeah. Which is supposed to be one and the same. We learn spirit language. And what does the Spirit say? Abba, Abba. That's how close he is. That's the same spirit on Jesus from forever. It wasn't just when he was human. They're, they're one. So in one text, it's the spirit who cries out. What were you quoting, Marcus? I don't know. I'm sorry. I'm talking. I'm just... No, no. Which one were you quoting? Which uh, one? Romans well, 8? I quoted Galatians 4, 6, but 8, 15 is the sonship and the spirit of adoption and the spirit of self bears with So quote Galatians again. Um, and because you are sons... God has sent forth the Spirit of His Son into your hearts, crying out, Abba, Father. So in Galatians 4, the Spirit's crying out, Abba, Father. Mm -hmm. In Romans 8, we cry, Abba, mm -hmm. Father. Mm -hmm. It says our covenant with the Spirit gives us spirit language from the heart. It's covenant. So what if the Spirit's saying it, we're, we should be saying it. Mm -hmm. huh. And in one sense, we are saying it. That's why it's so important to pray in tongues a lot. Mm -hmm. Anyway, carry, all, carry on, all from verse 3. And, um, yeah. Verse 4, even, okay, all covenant language is my point, but now we see, but now we see what covenant is. It's dynamic family, sonship. That's covenant to God. Even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. In love he predestined us for adoption as sons. See, that's covenant language. See that? In love. That's covenant right there. Wow. Fiery, burning, passionate. I will commit myself to you forever and ever. Love. That is what creates covenant. Mm -hmm. So his plan all along was sons. That's what he means by predestined there. Whether or not you're individually predestined, like someone way more reformed would believe, even if that's true, that's not the way I see it, but even if that's, that's true, the main point is not you're individually, well, I guess this still is important, but it's the main point here is not that you're individually chosen and other people are not. The main point is that this is God's destiny for you. Mm -hmm. This is his plan. Mm -hmm. Sonship. That's what Paul's thinking. Well, I'm not saying that he, he's not thinking at all whether or not a certain person is predestined. But the main thing is, this is what God is up to. He, it's predestined. We're talking destiny. Sonship is his goal, because the establishing of his kingdom is his goal. Which means his plan for us is to be sons. He predestined us for adoption as sons through Jesus the Messiah, according to the purpose of his will. See? Now, how do you, do you have it translated differently? Does it speak? Verse 5? Does it speak? According to the purpose of his will. Or it could I have even be pleasure. Good, the pleasure. pleasure. You see, the, see the, these words for purpose are not sterile like our little lady friend or our older lady friend that we talked of in prayer. They're, they're, purpose 
that's fueled by passion. Just like if you're, you're taking your family on a, on a wonderful vacation. You, you plan it out, but you're not just, you know, technically planning it out and you know, you're, just, you, you're, you're just making a map and a schedule. You're like so excited about going to do this, but you plan it based on that excitement and the joy that you're going to experience. Wow. Well, this is greater than a vacation. So it's, they're emotional words. <laughs> the, the, the good pleasure of his will. To the praise of His glorious grace, or the glory of His grace, which He has blessed us in the Beloved. Again, in the Beloved, that's covenant language. In Him we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses. That's a, that's a covenant blessing, and it's a covenant necessity. We've been renewed. Well, how do you describe the removal of sins? We've been forgiven. That's a covenant blessing. According to the riches of His grace, which He lavished on us, in verse 8, in all wisdom and insight, He made known to us the secret of His will, according to His purpose, which He set forth in the Messiah. So Jesus is at the center. And what is His will? Uh, verse 10, as a plan for the fullness of time. My Bible says, to, or the ESV says, to unite all things in Him, things in heaven and things in heaven. See how it all ties yeah, together. Yeah. Um, I have the word unite. The word there means to reca recapitulate or to sum up all things. It has to do exactly with, with Mikhail. Okay. Mikhail, forgive me. Bringing everything under the direct dominion of Jesus. <laughs> Summing it all up. Everything's in reference to him. Just like all of creation was created through him. And everything that's naturally created bears some aspect of his character and signature. Yeah. It's all a small reflection of Jesus. One day, all of renewed creation will be in direct reference to him, reflection of him, and under his dominion. And God will be all in all. At the center of this now is the development of our sonship, which in community then looks like what I would just write as the Greek word, ecclesia. The community of sons. This is what it looks like now. Whatever other prophetic impact the church is having on any society and any nation, thank God for it. But this is non-negotiable. The establishment of this. Because this thing will rock in a completely hostile environment or a completely friendly environment. It will still advance and establish the kingdom. You'll love it, you'll hate it, but you'll never ignore it. It'll be a thing. It'll stand out. As opposed to church that just kind of fits in. Massive mega things all over the place and the nation still goes in the same direction. So I was going to look at these two passages, Galatians and Romans 8. So we quoted Galatians, let's go to Romans 8. 